Hey everyone, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. It's episode 591 being recorded Wednesday, June, June 17th, 2020. I'm Jim Tannis. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Sebastian Peake. Thump. I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, we're, we're glad you could be here with us. Uh, we record these shows uh, once a week, usually Wednesday or Thursday. If you'd like to know when we go live, because we do stream it out live when we record it, you can join us at pcpro.com slash subscribe, where we send out an email an hour or so before each live stream so that uh, you can know when to join us. And of course, you can always catch the on-demand edited versions with the sidebar and the show notes and the timestamps and all that good stuff at pcpro.com slash podcasts or on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash pcper. Uh, well, let's, so we've got, uh, for, for a week that I didn't think a lot happened, we have a number of things to talk about. So let's get into the, uh, the uh, show start, or let's start the show. Uh, first off, uh, our Patreon campaign is ongoing at uh, patreon.com slash PC per. Uh, if you become a new patron there, uh, you can send a message. We'll read out a message, funny, embarrassing, or just uh, your name, if that's what you'd prefer. Uh, so please join us there. As we talked about in, uh, I think it was last week's show, there are some changes regarding sales tax coming to Patreon. So we'll be trying to navigate that uh, soon. I've already put some support emails in. I'm trying to figure out with their team how to structure things so that we can minimize any sales tax uh, implications for you guys. Uh, but uh, stay tuned for more on that. That goes into effect July 1st. And uh, we have one uh, one patron, new patron last week. Uh, it's uh, Jake, Ma uh, Jake McGee or Jake Maggie. Uh, thank you so much, Jake, uh, for supporting us there. And uh, uh, it was uh, it was a Wednesday today. I don't I didn't see on your Twitter, Josh. Did you have a burger today, or did you? I did forget? not. You know what? Uh, you know what? The idea of a burger just sounded too heavy, and so instead, I went to Qdoba. And let me tell you, that was kind of a mistake because mm -hmm. with all the pandemic stuff around, they've cut down the menu, and they really only had something that kind of sounded good. And it's like their their uh, uh, chicken uh, street tacos. And they were so pathetic. It was it was awful. It was it was not nine dollars well spent. Let's just unfortunate. I probably should have went with a burger, but it just seemed too heavy. I, I just that'll earn you. Yes. Well, less nobody wants less. to see sad, sad street tacos. You didn't less. take a picture, I hope. No. Yeah, there was nothing on his camera. Twitter feed. That's how good it was. But uh, speaking of Twitter feeds, uh, Sebastian has also been teasing something on his feed. Uh, he got a little something in the mail recently, and he was very excited to to tease this this uh, system sent over from Falcon Northwest. We'll be going into more about uh, just what those folks over at Falcon have packed into this little beauty. Uh, but he decided to uh, do a an impromptu Twitch unboxing, and uh, thanks to uh, community member Soren, we have a replay of that event uh, from the other night. So here we go. And actually, look. There goes the side panel. All right, so we're going to uh, take Stepper to uh, it's, take it's two on stream, that. It's a stream, a stream that will live. In infamy until yes. I delete it. Well, <laughs> too late. You, you can't delete what Soren. He, uh, he's hosting that locally, so no control I'll there. Issue, I'll, I'll just show a takedown on it. <laughs> that always works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, just to be clear, you'd be issuing that takedown against our own Discord server, so we'll see mm. how that goes. All right. But uh, I'll, anyway, uh, let's get into the stories this week. So we talked about it a few well, weeks well, before ago. Before we do that. Oh, okay. Thing. Yes. How come I look so much better than Sebastian today? It is a mystery. Sebastian usually yes. has the best quality video and usually audio on the stream. But I mean, I've got uh, the orange background going. I've got some front-facing LED lights. Not good ones, mind. Yeah. But I'm I'm cheap. It makes a difference. You look a lot it does. better this week. I think your camera's performance has been enhanced greatly by the lighting that you've mm -hmm. added. Yeah, well, also, it, it doesn't hurt that I laughed really hard at the video, and I got a good... Yeah. <laughs> got a bit of color in. Yep, yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you look alive. Josh are, you, are, Josh, are you using the C920 camera? 920, yes. 920C, whatever it is. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. solid camera. This is the Brio. I have a love-hate relationship with the Brio. Jim, you use that camera, right? Yeah, this is a Brio now, but I've also got, yeah. I've got a key lights. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Making yeah. it look 
It is kind of as good as it can be. It's kind of and, amazing and how the every movement I make changes the exposure radically. It really does. Yeah. You Maybe you should off. go out and get some sun. How do I do that? I, I don't or know. Or adjust your tent. It's a mystery. In Michigan, it is a mystery because is it ever sunny there? Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, if you went outside, I guess mm, it would be sunny. Well, we'll be back. We'll be back to normal next week when I rebuild yeah. the old streaming PC and don't have any random freezing issues with the Camlink 4K. Yeah, fair that enough. Totally fair enough. And another benefit of joining our live stream, if you're not listening to this live right now, is that you get to spend 10 minutes before the show as we help Sebastian figure out his impromptu streaming setup. Uh, it's a master class in buffoonery, we'll say. But uh, let's jump into the story. So as I was about to say, uh, we, we talked about it a few weeks ago. There were rumors that AMD was going to be refreshing part of its uh, Matisse Ryzen 3000 desktop lineup. And... Uh, there were not only rumors that it was going to happen or not, but there were rumors about exactly what this meant, that they were going to an XT branding. So instead of like the Ryzen 9 3900X, you know, the Ryzen 9 3900 XT. And uh, we got some some rumors back then that it was going to be a more significant jump than it actually turned out to be. But they did finally release those this week, or they announced them. They're coming July 7th, which reminiscent of the actual Ryzen 3000 launch last summer. And uh, so you'll be able to get them. And it's not as exciting as uh, as perhaps we hope, but it's a nice little freebie. So here's a, a look at what they've announced. Uh, there, this is There's three new processors. They're going to be replacing their standard X counterparts. So you've got the Ryzen 9 3900 XT, Ryzen 7 3800 XT, and Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Now, compared to their standard X counterparts, everything is the same. Cores and threads, base frequencies, TDPs, and cache the difference is boost frequency. On the 3900 XT and the 3600 XT, you get a 100 megahertz boost. And on the 3800 XT, it's a 200 megahertz boost. So a little bit better value there. It goes from 4.5 to 4.7 on that processor for the boost frequency. AMD's uh, PR guru, uh, and I don't know his exact title anymore, but it's, uh, it was Robert Halleck. He had a uh, video he put out announcing this, and they talked about how they're doing this because they have been over the year that they've had these processors in the market, they can improve the, the process of manufacturing and uh, they were able to squeeze out a little bit more efficiency. And so in the face of uh, the 10th gen Intel launch just recently, why not launch, get, get a little bit more boost out of what's in the market. Not something you're gonna wanna run out and buy if you have one of the standard counterpart processors, uh, but if you're in the market for these, if you haven't bought Ryzen 3000 yet, this is what you'll be buying in the market uh, uh, coming soon next month. Uh, what do you guys think about this now that it's official? Apparently, this is is supposed to be an enhanced version of of seven nanometer process that AMD is using. And when I say enhanced, it's it's going to be little tweaks that have happened from essentially middle of last year till now. And it and it's just. Yeah, when you start any kind of process technology, you've got engineers on both sides working on it. You've got you've got the process engineers from TSMC, and you've got the AMD guys doing stuff. And so they're 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 tweaking things, they're learning things. I mean, it's not all of the whole groups doing it. Otherwise, that's kind of a waste of men and materials, you know, people and materials. Um, but they find different mixes at work. Uh, they they have a lot of automation in there. They they've got a lot of though granular control over the process technology. And so they're typically, I mean, you know, AMD used to have this thing before they spun off global foundries. I can't remember APM or something like that. Advanced process management. But basically they did hot lots of wafers to change around some of the physical properties and, and some of the ways they do, um, you know, deposition and lith, uh, litho and, and, it, and I mean, they, they, you know, it's almost alchemy to tell you the truth. I mean, they mix and match stuff to, to, to get results and they see what works that what doesn't. And this is what these process engineers do all the time. I mean, they monitor the process flow. They, they, they check out the yields at the end. They do testing in between. They, they do all kinds of stuff. They pull wafers out. They do, you know, micrography on it. I mean, they just, it's, it's, it is a constant 
process of, of improvement that these guys are doing because <clears throat> it helps not only their their partners who they're doing waivers from, but it's helping themselves because if they're like, hey, you know what, you're going to order all these wafers and you're going to you know accept a percentage amount of dyes. And if we can improve that, then we can also improve our our contract negotiations with you, not only with, you know, further way for orders, but, you know, farther on into the future, because you know that we're going to work on this and, and, and you're going to get the most money out of each wafer start that, that you're possibly can do. And so um, there haven't been major uh, changes in the seven nanometer process from, you know, last summer to now. But there have been constant small improvements. And so they're at a point where their yields are much better, bins are better, and they can now offer these products that that are clocking higher, but they don't, you know, cost as much as, as probably the original stuff last year. And so it is a nice uh, it's a nice improvement. It's a refresh. I mean, it's it's you know, instead of a uh, hundred and ninety-nine dollar thirty six hundred X. Retailers get to go up to two hundred fifty nine dollar um, or two forty nine dollar thirty six hundred XT, and that's kind of the same thing with the other SKUs. Is that they're pushing those ASPs back up and they're offering consumers a little bit better product, especially those you know who are first entering the market. They can say, "Hey, I can get a thirty six hundred, I can get a thirty six hundred X, or I can get kind of the top end thirty six hundred XT," and I think it's going to be very interesting to see the reviews come this July and see what else happens because with, you know, say for the 3600 XT, the boost clock is only a hundred megahertz more. However, there's a lot of thought that um, sustained performance is also going to be higher. So you're going to get, you know, if you load up all the cores, instead of it jumping down to what, 3.8 gigahertz, you may see it, you know, officially it's 3.8 eight gigahertz with the XT. But when you compare one to the other, I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to see sustained performance across l- different loads. They're going to be higher overall because uh, AMD is, is kind of saying, well, you know, we're seeing a 4% increase in, in all these applications with the XT chips versus the regular Xs. So uh, it's going to be fun to see. It's, it's a nice refresh. We're still six months away from... Uh, Zen 3, at least. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be uh, it's it's a good midlife upgrade. Kind of like buying a Dodge convertible. <laughs> After owning what? Uh, a Dodge? You- Non-convertible? <laughs> well, you know, your choice of midlife cars aside... Um- you know, it, that yeah, I'm going goes. with the whole midlife Chrysler thing. Oh, oh now we're Chrysler. going. Oh, there you okay. have it, midlife Chrysler. Much better. Gotcha. You know, this this does the silicon gets better as you were saying over a period of time, and they get better yields out of it. But this does give them a nice, you know, towards the end of their lifespan, uh, a business friendly price uh, reset. You know, there's a natural price where price float downward over a period of time, and this gives them a nice boost, and they. You know, they aren't nearly as big as Intel, of course, and don't have the cash flow. Not that they're not doing well, but, you know, this gives them a chance to reset their pricing on this pretty much the same silicon. No IPC increase, no process, no change. It's a good business move. Yeah. It didn't really cost them anything. Exactly. That's that's the the point Yeah, you and Josh were making. It's it's because, and on this chart, if you're on the audio version, on this chart we have, I... I put MSRPs and street price. So AMD was very clear that these will launch at the same MSRPs as the standard X series did. But again, that was a year ago and prices have fallen. So I went out, I went to Micro Center. You can pick your, your retailer. I chose Micro Center. And so on this sheet, we can see that the Ryzen 9 3900X as of this afternoon was selling for 399 down from a 499 MSRP. The 3800X was at 309 from a 399 MSRP. And the 3600X is at 189 down from a $249 MSRP. So, of course, we will see what happens with pricing when these do hit the market. And, you know, there will be fluctuations. But as Brett said, 
this will elevate things at least temporarily uh, back up a little bit. AMD can can somewhat justify uh, charging those higher prices, and they these XT series will supplant in the normal chain than the non X series, but what's in, in the chain already is going to be sold at discounts and considering, you know, the, the small boost frequency differences for most of these parts. Uh, and even if they do, because of process uh, improvements, eke out a little bit longer sustained performance, a lot of people may be better off. If you haven't moved to Ryzen 3000 yet, maybe better off trying to grab a, a really good deal on the old standard X series uh, here in the next uh, few weeks. So you know, evaluate what you need there and, and keep an eye out for that, of course. Or to be honest, if you're pricing out the X, the XT is not going to cost you anymore. Well, off of MSRP. Yeah, well, yeah but it is. Well, there. Street okay. price on like a 3900 at 399 is is a reasonable deal right now. And they're resetting the price uh, 100 bucks. Yep. At least out of the gate. So much so up we'll, here. Yeah. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah, well, Canadian pricing, we can't. Yeah. We can't help you. I, I gotta throw that I don't in know. there. Because... It's like that plus two cows and a chicken, I think, or something. Uh, no, a beaver. Oh, oh, <laughs> of course. And a gallon of maple syrup. Mm. Oh, I just no, to say, you're talking Intel pricing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that I, mainly because of the pricing on the X series parts, because the, oh, this has been a year. The July 7 will be the one year anniversary of Zen 2's launch. And the prices have come down so far since then that you can literally, like yesterday, I think it was $417 US on Amazon for the 3900X. That's been right around 400 Like Jim was saying, 399 is not uncommon for that processor at retail. And for a, the same type of performance increase that you could get, your, I would say most of these are, are going to easily clock up 100 megahertz. Obviously, they're are places like Silicon Lottery that were pre-binning these to, to go higher. But we're not talking sustained all-core boosts here. We're talking about the single-core boost clocks being enhanced within the same TDP, which is a potentially misleading number, I will just say, because the TDP is based on the base clock, and the base clock didn't change. So, of course, these have the same TDP. They may or may not consume more power under load at a higher frequency. So if if it's like the 3950X again, and it comes out and it has more cores, slightly higher single core boost clocks than the 3900X, and lower overall power draw, because it was such an incredibly binned part, or was I wrong about that all along? It wasn't so much that it was a binning ish uh, difference. It was that seven nanometer had become more. I don't know. Like it's been, it's the process itself is more refined. Is 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 just doesn't require as much power. Josh, would that be like a, a leakage thing? Is it possible that without a major change, like they're not changing the lithography process, that they could actually maybe they're just lowering voltage ever so slightly? Gosh, if only I was an actual process engineer and give you a concrete no i it it, it kind of goes back to the whole alchemy thing you know mixing and matching and seeing what comes out of the oven uh, i mean it's a little bit more scientific than that i mean they've they've got the basics down but through a lot of feedback through a lot of testing through a lot of wafers being shipped through this process um they learn things and they they optimize you know kind of the the mix and and how they do the work uh, because if you dig into process technology and how they do you know metal dis uh, deposition and um, and litho and layers and all of that it's it's I mean it is almost pure magic that any of this works that that we have computers and graphics that work as they do and pretty much damn near flawlessly i mean not entirely obviously but when you've got four to six billion gates i'm not talking transmission transmitters uh transistors but but actual gates and, and it's just it's amazing that you can get electricity 
to act as it does through this massively complex chip. And there are just so many variables, and especially in manufacturing. You get something a little bit off wrong there, you've, you've got wafers that are just ruined. You can't do anything with. And we've seen that. I mean, earthquakes have caused that, that they're in the middle of, of some process and the earthquake happens. It's like, well, we got to throw all of these away because it's interrupted the process. And it's something so delicate, so time consuming that, uh, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, almost a butterfly effect. You, you change one small thing and, and it could have a huge amount of effects across the chip. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just amazing to me. And these guys do uh, impressive work with statistical analysis on on wafers and and making small changes here and there and be able to figure out what really works, what doesn't, what is marginally better, what if marginally better, if we add it with something else, becomes quite a bit better. I mean, it's it's just it's complex. And you think that, that these mega wafers, mega fabs are doing 50,000 wafer starts a week. That is just just a huge number. And I mean, the number crunching and the analysis, it really is mind-boggling. It's why these people make billions of dollars and I'm sitting at home not, not. doing that. Yeah. Well, and, and then you've got Samsung that's already bragging about three nanometer. Like, it's, it's a bizarre. Their five nanometer process is already pretty much solidified and we're going to see it in the not too distant future, but they're already working on three nanometer. Like at this point, if a gnat sneezes next door, you better hope that you're completely and totally insulated or else, like you said, you're going to be tossing everything away because at that point, the, the precision is insanity. Well, so we'll, I guess uh, we'll see exactly once these hit reviewers. So I really answered the Sebastian's question with that. Five not minute not at all. Uh, not at all, Josh. I enjoyed that. Uh, it did not answer my question in the slightest, but thank no, you. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the, the, you're going to see over time, you're going to see process improvements through how they analyze the beginning of the waiver starts to the final product and figuring out where they went right where they went wrong and that takes time it's a lot of wafers and a lot of trial and error and i say trial and error like you know they're not they're not doing major changes they're doing little little small things that from wafer to wafer or batch to batch rather is so minimal that they don't want to break it but they want to see what it does so there you go yeah, yeah. a year right. after initial production they're they're getting to the point where they can offer a slightly better product because the 3950x of course it was delayed and then by the time it came out it had been a few months and they'd obviously been working mm -hmm. on it and they had samples sent out before the launch so around june time frame they were shipping these things out and then it was all the way until november before i think these parts were in people's hands so they had time to kind of yeah. refine it that was funny looking well, at well think of how long here. it took it's, it's for seven us to get a plus, plus plus well, think about yeah, funny. No, no. Uh, think about how long it took us to get good amounts of product of the thirty nine hundred plus or thirty nine hundred X rather. I mean, it was announced, it was released in in August. There was no availability whatsoever, and then around November when they announced the thirty nine fifty, then we started to get good available, and then by end of January, you could get both chips. Without an issue. I mean, it was it was really, truly kind of impressive uh, how AMD and the partner TSMC were able to get these chips out and running and hitting the thermal envelopes and power draw that they were that they were hoping to. And not only that, but there were there was there was good availability across the board. And I we had I know we had talked in the background and behind the scenes and thought. You know, the 3950X is just going to be a really rare part. We're just not going to see very many of these because there's no way they can get their yield and bins up to this point. And we were right for a short know, time. Yeah, for a very, very short, short time. time. <laughs> January <laughs> comes around. It's like, yeah, you want a 3950X? Here, have one. Well, they just uh, got that guy one? to stop stomping around outside of the litho room. And that, that fixed it, really, is what happened. 
Yeah, he was he was outside pacing and smoking and, and getting mad at his wife and stomping and banging on the wall. And they, they figured that, you know, small little variable out and it just, you know, blossomed. Suddenly silicon shaped up and everything was good. They started shipping after yeah, that. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. If only we had had patience, because as Sebastian is mocking me in the Discord chat, uh, <laughs> yeah, we during that window when we didn't think there'd be good availability and we weren't sampled by AMD, you know, we went out to sil- the Silicon Lottery store and paid an obscene uh, upcharge wow. to get a 3950X. And it did, you know, it got one in our hands and we were able to work with it. Uh, but if we had just waited a month, I, I could have, you know. Put a down payment on Josh's new car. I mean, we could have but we could have done a lot of things. It was the experience and the quality of the part that you got. Uh, well, I mean, it was interesting no. because with Silicon Lottery, yeah, no. they they no. advertise a guaranteed frequency, so there was that yeah. side of it, which we actually never did anything with. I don't think we actually. No, I, we, I tested no. it just for fun one night, but yeah, it was rated for four point one gigahertz all core, which it did without any voltage adjustments, without any anything. You just went and set it. Wow. Magic. And they did they do their own binning to make sure that the chips will do that at stock voltage. But yeah, it was eleven hundred bucks for a seven hundred and forty nine dollar processor. Yeah. So they, they make their mark up. And then of course shortly thereafter, uh AMD sampled us anyway. That's yes, we eventually yeah, I was I was wrong. I did AMD didn't sample us at launch, but they did come through a little yeah. later with that and they were, we were wave so. two we were wave two in fact they sent us a threadripper and the 3950x together in the same fedex envelope and i was just like wow it's here we have it and of course at that point uh, jim had already bought the yeah 39 we're sorry X. here's the threadripper but hey you know we gave us a new corporate logo pc perspective wave two or better guaranteed hmm. on coverage <laughs> yeah hey we we are maybe not the first Maybe not even always the second, but usually when there's a few extra samples laying around, it's like, should we throw these in the trash? Or Well, yeah, PC perspective. They're still yeah. around. We get it in the end. Right. Uh, well, it's not yeah. what it is that you meant to say. Well, you know, continuing, uh, on with, with it. continuing on with <laughs> AMD here. So in addition to being the one year anniversary coming up here on, on July 7th of the original Ryzen 3000 launch, we're finally getting those mid-range boards, the b 550 series and uh they've just started hitting the stores and despite being a mid-range i mean there are some pretty affordable options out there but the pricing range is pretty steep uh, up near 300 dollars for some of these boards uh so guys tell us uh, what's what's going on with uh, the the uh, final arrival of b550 the, what's interesting to me is just the number of boards and the fact that they have created this sort of sub i don't know what to call it there's a premium category now in mid-range and low-end boards because these I, we're just looking at the asus lineup first but they launch they're launching with 11 boards that range anywhere from 135 up to 280 dollars so you're talking about rog strix branded more premium packaging more pack-in accessories and a sort of premium experience at 280 dollars where of course at the top of the product stack you can pay six, seven hundred or more for a premium X570 board. So it it starts to create a compelling argument about if you don't need reverse compatibility at all, if you're only planning on running newer processors, because of course B550 is limited in a way that X you know 400 and 500 series motherboards are not as far as backwards compatibility goes. So if you're just looking at one of these new Zen two processors and are looking for a good platform for it i i haven't done any testing yet i think we're going to hear very sh- soon about the the performance of these various boards as people get them in and, and do some benchmarks on them and really you're not sacrificing a whole heck of a lot there obviously are differences between the chipsets no doubt but you're getting pci express 4.0 compatibility and much, Across much only the GPU and the first M.2. Correct. That's where they yeah, cut it. So that's why it's, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's PCA 3.0 throughout after that. This, yeah. this does speak kindly to how to, the board manufacturers are now viewing the AMD ecosystem, uh, ecosystem now with a huge product stack that they didn't really always have before. And they were a little bit tentative and they're really bringing some high quality stuff and bringing some things that were really only in their 570 products into the 550 space, especially in the VRM area. 
Yeah. Do you remember back in the day when the AMD 970 boards cost from $79 oh. to $149? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <sighs> The salad years, salad. Yeah, yeah, but you fifty percent of the budget was everything. Fifty percent was the GPU. They left ten percent of the board to solder when you got it. I, I think that's how it worked, right? It depended like, on the manufacturer. The traces that you had to still make. That's kind of the reason. But also, you I mean the, you may be paying more these days, but the price to performance ratio is just through the roof, folks. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> So. No, seriously, it, it's actually good. It's, yeah. And and Asus isn't the only one that's done it. Do you want to know my theory? Blowing out I'm the product sorry stack. No, no, God. Is it your theory? I, I, I think it's a combination of multiple theories. Okay. That You know, I, I, the motherboard manufacturers for years have been living on razor-thin margins. And it's almost like they kind of got together with Intel and AMD and said, hey, this is not sustainable anymore. We're, we're just, you know, a bad year can really, really ruin things for us. We need to build in some more margin into these boards. And so instead of having a $200 top end board, you know, five years ago, you've now got a $600 top end board. And if you look at features of the time then and now, you don't see a huge amount of difference. I mean, there's still, you know, overbuilt VRMs. You've got, you know, the good inner uh, Ethernet at the time. Uh, you've got, you know, enhanced audio, all of these things. But, you know, it seems like from the X79 on that we've now seen much, much higher priced motherboards from these guys. And now it's gone to the B550, which is the low range amd it now has products up in the 280 dollar range from a variety of manufacturers it just is that's a huge amount of inflation in a pretty short period of time and i'm not begrudging any of that because their margins on motherboards are thin true and true. I, I would be curious what return rates and, and the things that they have done to you know cut prices and and cut component cost to, to get to these, you know, to, to these price points. And then again, the, the support issues that you have by boards burning out and they, you know, cut corners a little too much and you have higher return rates. And, and it's what, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of economics involved and statistics and variables that you got to put together. And so, yeah, I think that, um, higher price boards are because, well, I, I think they're tired of just being on the edge. But no, I love to see the, the split between PCIe 4.0 and PCIe 3.0 on these boards because it makes bloody sense. Your OS install uh, might actually benefit from the throughput that you're going to see uh, on the PCIe 4.0 with the one single Fizon controller that we currently have uh, to take advantage of. Uh, your single 16 by 4.0, well, if you use that for storage, can actually make sense. If you use it for graphics card, you're not going to notice a difference. But then by cutting a little bit of the cost that we we're seeing on some of the higher end motherboards for straight PCIe 4.0 throughout the board, saying, and the rest of it's PCIe 3, and here you go, and you don't have to worry about active cooling. Uh, some of the motherboards I saw, what they did uh, to make it very obvious for people uh, was that the M.2 that's 4.0 is on the front. The 3.0s are on the back. You can't mix it up. It's straight out. There, there you go. And besides, it's on the back because it's not producing quite as much heat. And to be honest, we'll probably spread nicely from the controller to the flash as long as it's pushed up relatively close to a, a back plate or an interesting wiring job. So, it, yes, it's, and I, I hate to say it, but it, it is more expensive than we were used to back in the days. And even just a generation ago, when you were looking at some of the, the lower end 350s, under $100 was very common to have. But in some cases, you gave up a lot. With the B550, you're not giving that up, but you're getting as much as you're probably going to use. I, I'm sorry that you're not going to be RAID zeroing PCIe 4.0 and VME drives. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense at this point. I, hey, hey, it maybe it doesn't make sense, but it's possible. 
which we will discuss well, later when we actually go through this Falcon Northwest system. But you know, yes. Well, but to that point, so, though, if you are doing that, if you are a power user who needs that, you're not buying B five fifty. You're buying X five seventy. You're going Threadripper. So yeah, price starts at four hundred and goes fair, north. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But the the not dollars that you're laying needs out needs four point oh grade zero. Sorry, Brad. Oh, go ahead. The dollars you're laying out on the 550 series looks like it's actually not wasted. They look like they're actually up the quality, generally speaking, and they're bringing some of the 570 features down to the 550 series, especially with with the electricals and some of the, the niceties of uh, what they're throwing in mm-hmm. and the, what they're doing with the, the board layouts and things like that. It, they, they look good. No, the power is a good mention, too, uh, because yeah. they are looking – they're putting in a lot of layers uh, – Many of them are using a doubler. Not all of them are. Uh, they're not skimping out on the caps. Like it's the electrical design of these boards is actually what you'd expect to be seeing from a, a flagship motherboard costing twice as much. And it's so way better than from, 450. Yeah. Way better than 450. Yeah. But from the stack that I've seen, the vast majority of them have some serious VRMs going and some really good mm-hmm. uh, power features, which is yeah. really nice to see. And uh, real quick on motherboards, because I, I think we forgot to mention it during our XT discussion. Uh, so with those new XT Ryzen processors, uh, the what they've what AMD has told us is that any board that supports Ryzen 3000 to begin with, you can drop the XTs in. It'll work out of the box. But most manufacturers are releasing uh, BIOS updates to optimize for the XT. So I don't know what that exactly means, if there'll be a performance uh, penalty if you're not running an optimized BIOS. So... But we'll see. Again, we're waiting for all this to, to hit reviewers and consumers' hands. So, Jim, no, no Jim I know to... what it means. Oh, it means okay. new Ajisa code. That's what it well, means. Of course it does. <laughs> 1.0.0.6. And there and goes whatever. PCIe support again. Yeah. Whoops. Demo. Oh, yeah. explosion. Yes, it does mean new Sebastian Ajisa code. Is, five is killed B. in the shrapnel. Come on, get it right. Sure. <laughs> but we'll see. what it, what it, Beyond just a new version number in your setup, uh, what is that? you know, work out to in real world performance. So, all right, well, let's, let's continue on with AMD here. So, uh, you know, AMD has just refreshed with these new XT processors that led some people to have a little bit of concern that maybe we wouldn't see Zen three until next year. And then, uh, digit times, which of course has, is not a perfect track record. They've, they're kind of all over the place occasionally, but they've also broken some stories in the past. They came out with a couple weird stories in the last week. One of them was saying that AMD was moving to five nanometer for Zen three, uh, which was news to everyone. And then also, uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. Oh, it's in Chinese. Uh, but, uh, they had a story come out that said, uh, amongst other things, AMD wasn't going to be able to deliver Zen three this year, this calendar year, 2020, that instead they would announce the official, you know, launch and details of the specs at CES 2021, and then it would roll out at some point, you know, during that quarter. And and that was uh, concerning because, again, AMD has said end of 2020, or at least that's when they'll begin the rollout. Uh, of course, that resulted in uh, PC World releasing a, a response that said, you know, they had a source that said that was nonsense, that AMD is still targeting it. And then uh, I guess was it, let's see, uh, Tech, tech Power Up, talked to AMD directly and AMD directly confirmed publicly with tech power up that they are launching Zen three in 2020. Now we, again, we don't know if that means everything. It could be a paper launch. It could be a limited, you know, subset of their, their product line mm-hmm. just to kind of meet that, that statement or that prediction. Uh, but we will, you know, based on what AMD just told officially told tech power, up, we will see Zen three in some form this year. Uh, so what a, back and forth we had in the last few days. What do you guys, uh, you know, what do you, what do you guys think is going to happen? Do you think AMD, do you think we will be able to buy processors in volume this calendar year or will it be a paper launch? Yeah. I don't know. I, th- I think it's funny that they're it, it, we're here. We are in late June. Well, mid June. I don't even know what date it is, honestly. And we haven't heard anything. It's been almost a year since the launch of Ryzen. And of course we'd been hearing about that off and on and, I think the reveal of of specifications. I don't know. I don't know if they did specs and pricing for everything at CES, but we knew a lot at CES. We knew more more at E3 last June, and of course we had the products in July. 
and here we are in June. Those are still going strong. There's really no reason for them to upgrade. And I think some of the speculation about their market position being so strong at this point because of a lack of any strong competition from Intel, because honestly, if you look at the 10th generation desktop parts, they're not a huge... I, I think they're a compelling upgrade if you just look at core and thread counts, but across the board, if you're just looking at IPC gains, that sort of a thing, it's it's the same architecture. So the performance benefit came from higher clock speeds. but And of course, they're basically unobtainable at this point. Uh, if you could buy a Core i5 10600K for its MSRP, it'd be a different story. But right now, AMD is kind of cruising. And if they decide to take it easy, let off the gas a little bit, they could they could have a two-year cycle on this. But I fear for them losing their rather dominant enthusiast processor position if they were to let up now. And then, of course, today, we're hearing from various outlets who reached out to AMD no, they're still coming. We're still on track for 2020 in some form, whatever that means. But we, you would think that maybe we'd have some sort of announcement by now if we were going to get something before holiday 2020. But who knows? It could be right around the corner. Well, as an enthusiast, you know, I hate to say it, but where is their biggest CPU lead right now? Or at least the one that they want to make the biggest. Epic? Yeah. So pour all of your time and effort and money that you can into Epic and make it brilliant. And yeah, we, our desktop users may suffer a little bit from this in delayed launches or in, uh, you know, I don't know that coasting is exactly the right word. It does feel right, but I don't think it's quite the way to go. Uh, of just small incremental launches, a little bit better uh, new process colors coming out, but in limited amounts. And just, you know, you've got the opportunity right now, AMD, to shoehorn yourself into the server room. And if you do that, then the next time, forklift upgrade or just drop in a new processor. Hmm. Yeah, okay, maybe this might be an interesting idea. Well, you know, a couple of things kind of, you know, came to me during this. It's, you know, at, at first I remember the V5 nanometer um, thought that it was going to be later this year, early next, that and, and they were going to skip this, you know, kind of second generation seven nanometer and go directly to five. But, you know, the more you dig around, the more you hear that, that there just are not going to be enough wafer starts available for AMD to do such a thing and to be able to, uh, address the market that obviously will open up if they have an advanced part. And not only that, but the amount of redesign that you have to do. If you initially were designing a chip a couple of years ago for TSMC 7 nanometer, there are still going to be some drastic and significant changes in between designs from 7 nanometer and even this advanced 7 nanometer with potentially some EUV, you know, on the first two layers that 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 there were some rumors of of it being uh, to go to five nanometer, which is kind of more heavily leveraged EUV and uh, transistor design, that it would take a lot to uh, to get that uh, designed and verified for a process, especially if you're in, right in the middle of of doing that for seven nanometer. It's a pretty significant change, and so yeah, it, it makes sense to me that they're going to stick with this, but. You know, I think having a refresh of the XT stuff, it's it's going to keep things motivated, especially in, in light of Intel releasing the 10 series. Uh, you're going to have these refresh parts that will compete with them uh, with Intel in the fall and throughout the fall until holiday season. And and probably the three most popular SKUs that AMD has is the 3900X, 3800X, and the 3600X. Though, I mean, you know, if actual numbers were involved, probably the 3600 vanilla is, is one of their most popular SKUs out there. But regardless, uh, this is kind of a higher end. They're, they're keeping high visibility and uh, offering these parts. And so it makes sense to me that they we will see more of the upper stages. Now, will they step away from chiplets? I, I don't think that they will because... Chiplets have been kind of a godsend to them uh, with this generation of products. And, you know, think about going from a 14 or 12 nanometer chiplet that they've been using in their processors 
to kind of the first generation, more, you know, mass bulk produced seven nanometer stuff. What can they do with that IO chip to improve performance? I mean, I, I, I had thought previously that they were going to improve, uh, include some level four cache on, on the IO and what's to say they won't do that this next generation. They very well might, if they do, then that's, it's going to be, that's going to be an increase in IPC because you're going to be jumping to that IO chip and getting it off the L4. And it really, I don't know, you know, I'm not a CPU designer. This is a shock to everybody. They could make it work. And we saw things with like uh, what Intel's Broadwell, where they had that L4. And there was a measurable increase in, in performance because of that. Um, I mean, you're jumping to that IO anyway. If you've got some kind of, you know, I don't know how they're going to do memory controller and split L4, but it is going to be a significant amount of latency less than going to main memory again, even if it's DDR4-3600. Um, having an L4 cache on that IO chip would be uh, big. But again, this is all really blue sky speculation. Um, but yeah, I think that we'll see really the high end and Epic in, uh, sorry about that. Somebody keeps texting me, but in the holiday season of this year, so we'll have a release, but I don't think we're going to have a huge amount of, uh, product out actually out in the market. Uh, any other, uh, thoughts on this topic or should we move on to the, uh, uh, amazing new Radeon pro mobile from Apple. All right, let's do it. So. Apple has uh, been a, a, a partner with AMD in terms of like first access to certain components, typically graphics cards, actually exclusively graphics cards. And we have a new one this, uh, this time around. And it's, uh, it's a, an update that was released this week as a, as a uh, build to order option on your 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's the Radeon Pro 5600M mobile. This is Navi 12, which was sort of the missing part of their mobile GPU lineup. And, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. So what this does, and, uh, let's see, so this is the AMD product page for it. Here's the spec. So, uh, what, what you're looking at here compared to the other AMD Radeon options on Apple and other laptops, uh, is you down clock, but you add a heck of a lot more compute units and you switch to HBM2 memory with insane bandwidth. And what you end up with is a more performant part than what was available before, but also at a more efficient power draw. So I think this is a 50 watt target uh, graphics option. So uh, it's it's pricey because of that HBM too. It's a $700 upcharge on the base 16 uh, MacBook Pro configuration, which I think is a 5500M with four gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, I actually looked at that and I went and priced one and I thought it was only $700 as well. It's 800 at least on the configuration that I was pricing, which was a low end uh, six core. Oh, okay, yeah. I, was, I think if you start well, so the low the the entry level MacBook Pro sixteen starts with the it's got a fifty three hundred M. It does, but if you if you actually add the fifty six hundred M to that one, it's an eight hundred dollar upcharge. Gotcha. Okay, so I was looking at this the middle skew which where it's is the, where it's only a seven hundred dollar upcharge. Only seven hundred. So. so. Hmm. You know, here's a table from a non-tech. They kind of show us uh, the the specs for what is in that market right now, going all the way back to the Vegas stuff and the even the uh, RX 560X, which was on the 2018 MacBook Pro, I think. Uh, so, a, an interesting new option here. I mean, it's probably gonna, it's going to be very performant. It's very efficient. Uh, it's but yeah, it's expensive. I mean, what do you guys think about uh, this entry? Uh, I mean, it's a 5700 XT with much lower clocks, right? Basically, with in terms of compute units and 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 H HBM two, well, okay, right, yeah. but but from what that means in a end of you know consumer level performance, uh, five point three teraflops compared to four point six on the fifty five hundred M. I guess so, I'd have to pull knew? up the fifty six hundred XT next to it and spec it out and look at the memory bandwidth and uh, speed and the the FP thirty two teraflops to see kind of really where it stood versus the traditional desktop part. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure that it's worth 700 bucks. I don't know. Seems pricey. I knew that RDNA one had uh, HBM to support. Raise your hand. Good point. 
because all we have seen so far is 55, 5600, 5700, all with GDDR6, no mention of HBM. I mean, you had to figure that they would support it somehow, but you've got to make some changes to that memory controller to, to get that to work. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see. And uh, that has a lot of bandwidth. And it's a low power. HBM2 mm-hmm. It's relatively low power as compared to GDDR6, especially for the performance. And even though it doesn't run as fast, I mean, in terms of pure megahertz, uh, it's still really low latency because it's just so wide and so shallow. Yeah, the, the, the bandwidth like is so huge. <laughs> I know, it's huge. Huge. Uh, oh, I was going to say, it's nice to see AMD is not completely abandoning HBM. They they let it a bit too early, as you know they they want to do, but uh, yeah, it's I I expect that sooner or later we're going to see it far more frequently in devices. It's just when, but it doesn't get deployed enough to get cost reduced. I mean, how do you fight that? You sell it on an Apple MacBook where people will pay whatever the number is on the page. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it gets it gets subsidized. I understand. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's, it's, but you don't think that people will not order this from Apple? They will. Yeah. Even if they it's, got one last time. Are we talking sensible people? I mean, I'm as Apple as. No, we're talking like Apple next, fanatics. Next guy. Yeah. I, Come on. I actually like Apple stuff. I do. I mean, I don't know. Ken's probably got one on pre order at this moment. Okay. Yeah. Probably. I mean, the prices are stupid. I, I, there's no argument there, but. Let's let's not yeah. devolve into another Apple podcast this week. That's right. okay. Because we know we I mean we know that that's just a more discerning class of consumer and they appreciate things. <laughs> it is. That and we're not process. talking to those people. Yeah. Well, hey, uh speaking of discerning <laughs> consumers, let me take a moment here to thank our new Patreon contributor, John Fillers. Uh just became a Patreon this evening. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the show, or at least uh parts of it. But let's get back yeah. to PC hardware. Aspects of it are probably fine. You have to kind of pick and choose. Uh... All right. Well, anyway, our next story is a little surprise uh, from one of those hacks working at Intel. Uh, this this <laughs> this schmuck uh, tweeted something today, uh, a, a little teaser. And uh, not only did he tease this, but we got some clarification finally on pronunciation. So this is Ryan Shrout, Intel's, Intel's chief performance mm-hmm. strategist. Who? whatever that means. And uh, he, he tweeted out a video of a, it's a little 45 second video of him playing battlefield five on uh, a tiger Lake prototype system. And uh, on top of that, it, so this is tiger that's what Lake. he claims. It's, that's what he claims. <laughs> uh, and it has the, what we've been calling or what I've been calling Z graphics X E, but he confirmed to us that it is supposed to be pronounced X E. So not that you would know that from this video where he neglected to use the keyword even once. That's true. That's true. But let's, was he, let's go tro- was he just trolling us though? Because I, I got a sense of perhaps a little bit of uh, facetiousness when he said it's X E like smiley face. Like, what does that mean? We, we I don't know if I trust that. Uh, it, well, I mean, I've learned from various YouTube videos that Ryan Shroud is the most important decision maker in Intel. So if he said it and he was being facetious, that's on him. So I'm going to take it at face value and I'm going to call it X. You're watching that's, different videos well, than me, then. There, sure. There's so certain people, people who call, call it X. Yeah, that's probably really, true it's, it's across not, the board. <laughs> it's not a pronounceable word in English, regardless. It could be G, G. or C, G, G, G Z. Yeah. G, C. Well, whatever marketing uh, came up with that, but XI let, let, makes more sense. Let's let's take a look at this video real quick here. So this is a it's a prototype thin and light laptop. Uh, let me mute it so I don't uh, go crazy here. Uh, it's a thin and light laptop, Tiger Lake, which is the Ice Lake successor, and uh, which is coming. And it's going to have this this just like Ice Lake had a huge integrated graphics uh, boost. This is going to have one as well with these XE graphics. And so what he's demoing here on this thin and light notebook with integrated graphics is Battlefield 5 running at 1080p, high preset, and he's getting about 30 frames, you know, 30 to the mid-30s frames per second. The highest he's ever seen from an IGP. Well, I mean, uh, at least an Intel one, for sure. He has to say that. Yeah. But uh, you know what's Intel interesting about sure. that? That's a smooth Adaptive 30 frames a second. Sync. 
Adaptive mm. Sync. Yep. Yeah. Ah, oh, those bastards. They get all the good things. Mm. Mm. It's true. Sure. So hey, again, Josh, this- there are open standards out there for that. Liar. There is true. <laughs> So from that little teaser, which again, it's prototype hardware and it's not scientific. It's Ryan holding it for the audio listeners. It's Ryan holding his, uh, presumably his iPhone up to the little PC prototype PC. That's what we're getting. And I, I tried, I went out and I was trying to find like what GPU hits 30 at 1080p high on battlefield five. So I went back to the battlefield five reviews and benchmarks. Everyone tested 1080p ultra. I couldn't find any 1080p high results to compare it to just to kind of get an idea like is this 900 like mid 900 series nvidia or is it a 480 i mean what's the equivalent like desktop analog or or you know something something 750 that we could, ti well seven, what did you sure. find yeah. at ultra like you're going what, what back was it? what was hitting well, 30 at, at ultra well i mean nothing really. I, like even like a 960 was at like 60 frames per second so you just couldn't get that low well, exactly. and, I, and I was just trying to do that just for, for educational purposes, but obviously this is, you're, looking, you're talking about a discrete desktop GPU versus an integrated mobile GPU in a thin and light. So there's going to be differences there. But the point is uh, interesting, you know, good to see uh, Ryan. I, I will uh, be contacting him and Intel uh, as uh, to have our lawyer send a cease and desist for uh, improper or unauthorized use of the PC Per logo colors and branding in the background mm-hmm. there. Uh-oh. I'm glad you, I'm not the only one that noticed that. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. And and but, just because it, I don't which want Which will any... in no way damage our reputation at all, of course. This could never be looked at as like, a oh, proof! There it is! Well, I was about to say, just because I, I feel like I have to say this because people still don't understand. Every time. Every he's, time. At a, he's at the old PC Per offices, which was a building owned personally by Ryan, which he used when he owned the company. We haven't worked there since the big exodus a year and a half ago. So that's why I guess they haven't painted yet. They should they should consider painting. Uh, I guess Alan's well, not doing much yeah. these days. So so that's all that is there. I, if, I, if you look I have him live me. on Discord at this exact second. So if you'd like me to <laughs> send him a message, that, that'd be the great. The official sure. the official PC per colors have become basically purple and RGB. So because most of the photos on the site end up being taken with this as a backdrop, and I chose purple because. It doesn't represent any specific brand. I actually put thought into this. Like I didn't want to do blue because that's Intel. I didn't want to do red because that's AMD. Can't do green because that's NVIDIA. So then what's left? Well, let's just mix them together. Purple's fine because it's a red and blue mixed together. And, you know, hopefully that doesn't offend anybody. But then, of course, if you have too much RGB in the background, <sighs> then people get offended too. So you just you can't win. Oh, look, it's my Dell guy. One second here. I just sent a message to Alan telling him to paint the office. He hasn't responded because he's so embarrassed. (laughs) They really should. Uh, uh, You know, I I have the trademark now. We have to enforce (laughs) it. Well, hey, well, uh, while Jeremy's checking on that and uh, and everyone's uh, getting ready for the second half of the show, we'll just take a break here to thank our sponsor this week. We'll be right back in about 60 seconds. Our sponsor this week is ExpressVPN. Regular listeners know that we've talked about ExpressVPN before, and you know that it's the VPN service that I've personally used and trusted for over three years. And when I first looked into ExpressVPN, my primary need was protection while traveling, so that I knew I would always have a fast, reliable, secure connection no matter where I was. But most of us probably aren't traveling much these days, and we're working from home. And ExpressVPN is still a great tool to have there as well. Whether you're a freelancer in charge of your own online security or you're working at home away from the resources of your company's IT department, ExpressVPN ensures that your online activity will be safe and secure. You don't need a corporate network or expensive networking gear to have a fast encrypted connection, even at home. Just get ExpressVPN, one of the easiest ways to secure your internet data on all of your devices. So don't wait, don't take the risk. Check out the VPN service that I personally use and trust, and by using our link, get an extra three months of service for free. Just head to expressvpn.com slash PCPer. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash PCPer for an extra three months free. Thanks to ExpressVPN for their support of the PC Perspective podcast. All right, and we're back. Uh, So Jeremy, you were reaching for something as we broke there. What have you got for us? Uh, this is back from the uh, Return Depot work laptop that uh, first had the battery bulge. And so I was very upset the fact that I had a laptop in my house that the battery had bulged so much the bottom had popped off, which is how I noticed. 
And then Fire. once I got that replaced, realized that it wouldn't boot. So now it's back again. And, you know, a quarter after eight is a reasonable delivery time drop off. Oh, you had an actual physical delivery. Oh, okay. Uh, that, yeah, that is a yeah. pretty impressive. Uh, uh, well, it also time. says specifically drop it off in the back laundry room as he's trying to give it to my neighbor, which is why I'm yelling through the front window to pass it to me directly gotcha. through it live on YouTube. Awesome. Well, I mean, that's the, the excitement, uh, the excitement of doing it live here, folks. Uh, you COVID live. You never, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm. It's a place to be. Apparently it's 830 there. Or eight something. Not quite. Yeah. It's late here for East Coasters. But uh, let's continue on with the show. Okay, so the uh, the next story we have is uh, should be real quick here. It's just a, a note that NVIDIA very silently gave uh, streamers and uh, Plex users a little bit of a bonus here. Uh, they increased the limit on consumer for consumer GPUs on NVENC uh, streaming sessions. So this is using your NVIDIA GPU of, of a certain generation. Going back quite a ways, but basically if you, if you've bought a consumer GPU from NVIDIA in the last few years, you probably supports NV Inc. And it had on the consumer side, an ar arbitrary or artificial limit of two concurrent streams uh, so that you could encode video for Plex or if you're streaming OBS or something. And to get around that, you either needed to go quadro, which is the reason that they limited it because they wanted to push you to quadro, or you could uh, use a, a, there was a, like a firmware hack that would allow you to, to get around it. it. You know, it was unofficial obviously, but, but if you didn't want to deal with that, they're not, they've now quietly upped it to three. So you can on almost all the GPUs that previously supported it, you can now do three concurrent streams instead of two. So if you didn't want to hack the card and you didn't have a quadro, your, your consumer GPU can now do those three streams coming from your Plex box or from your streaming rig or whatever. So you know, I mean, it's, it's, it sucks that they artificially limit it. I mean, I understand why, but it's a nice little gesture here to, to up that, uh, as we're, as of course, we're, we're all waiting for Ampere here, uh, waiting to give Jensen all of our money, but, uh, oh, the more you buy the more How many buy. spatulas. Yes. The more you buy. We should, we should rate all future, uh, NVIDIA I, reviews by spatula. Like, you know, it's a five you know, spatula. I, I think oh my this gosh, is a good yes. idea. Yeah. Yes. And uh, unlike my joking cease and desist towards Intel, we may actually get a real cease and desist from NVIDIA or they'll just stop sending us stuff. Yeah. Mm. Whatever. But uh, all right. Next story is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's easy for you to say whatever. Just whatever. That's fine. <laughs> to stop sending us stuff. No, it's not fine. Well, NVIDIA, if you're watching, we care. Well, we do and care. I liked those spatulas. I like those spatulas. And I think Jensen has a great kitchen. Also, I like his jackets and he has great hair. Yeah, I mean, of all of the COVID-related virtual press conferences that we've all had to sit through, and videos was pretty good, all admit. things considered. Yeah, you have to admit, the yeah. kitchen yeah. note uh, was pretty entertaining. Yeah, the lighting the, was good. Not only that, but, but Jensen, he's, he was lifting weights to get that thing out of his oven. Yes. Pretty buff. You think so? Uh, yeah. Linus, if you look at Linus these days, he's got, like, the long hair, the beard. He looks like he's been working out. Jensen's been working out. What's this? I, I must have missed the memo on that because I've been doing. This nothing is why they've made a lot of money, Taylor, and we have not. Yeah, ah, good point. Self care. Uh, well, okay. So next up, we've got a story uh, from so Sebastian uh, Lenovo came out with a few new uh, think, uh, ThinkPad, the P series, yes. and the X One Extreme Gen Three. So I was going to say, could before we get into this, before we get into this, could you please share with people? through the magic of uh, video editing, the image that Soren has shared with oh. the PC Perspective uh, endorsement of Hang our on. friends at NVIDIA. There we go. Yeah, Audio listeners, idea. you are blessed because you don't see this. Yes, it's it's a, a lovely... It's got everything. Uh, as always from, from Soren, a lovely Photoshop of Sebastian giving his creepy approval to Jensen's a kitchen message of the more you buy, the more you save. It includes Outstanding. It's, spatulas. Yeah. The spatulas. And the, it's got spatulas in the shot. Perfect. The it's nice just, gradient. If the, the audio text. description. Yeah, if the audio description of this isn't enough, I mean, by all means, join our Discord because you can see disturbing imagery like this on a nearly daily basis. Oh, yeah, you can be offended every 12 minutes. Roughly. Oh, yeah. there. It's it's not for the faint of heart. Oh, we're falling but, down uh, 
it's months. it's lightly moderated now. So yeah, some of well, the absolute well, worst things. Some could are argue heavily moderated, removed, but they're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mods are very active, but they do very little moderation. And they're sometimes the ones they're the worst causing the most themselves. problems. Yes. I would argue. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is why I, I think we're explore not, my powers we're not, of banning the banners. <laughs> Ban- yeah. who's, who's, we're, we're not really selling this very well. Uh, it's it's the wild right, west. Let's just let's just go again. Editing. Jim, cut this during edit editing. Yeah. Ab- oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, well, if you do want to join our Discord server, there's an invite link in all of our show notes at pcpro.com/podcast. You'll find that link there uh, under the download uh, uh, section. All right, so Sebastian. It's a silly place. Tell us, what's up with Lenovo and their new ThinkPads? Hey, new ThinkPads. They're all 10th gen Intel. They all have, it looks like they're doing this brighter screen on all of them because the, uh, every single one of these P series and then the new, so these are new P series mobile workstations and the new ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3, are what they've announced. And for the, you would think this is just spec bumps. It's to get the whole lineup on 10th gen Intel, but like I was alluding to, the the screens look like they've been improved a lot because they, they were advertising 600 nits brightness across the board, I think, on all of these that I looked over. But the big thing is the new P15 and P17, which replaced the P53 and P73, they said they started over again. They're starting from scratch. They said it's a totally different uh, thermal design, and they're going with a modular design approach, which, of course... This is kind of old fashioned here. They're actually using individual components instead of just soldering everything to the board, which there it gives them more flexibility with customization of these. But it also sounds a lot like this is going to be something that users could potentially upgrade down the road, or at least you'd have better repair options. So that's always good. I like the idea of, you know, using daughter cards, using I don't know if they're using SODEMs or if they're just using socketed processors like in the old mobile processor days and uh, socketed some kind of slot or socket for GPUs as well. But anyway, just check out the the news post if you want to see a, a, a very brief summary of each of the new models. The X1 Extreme Gen 3 in particular, if you're familiar with the ThinkPad X1 series, it's their ultra, like their razor thin business machines these are not inexpensive they're now offering them up with up to a 10th generation core i9 mobile processor only up to 1650 nice. ti graphics you're not getting like the max q graphics in this but it's a business machine the fact they're offering it with discrete graphics at all is kind of nice they didn't uh, mention pricing on that one though which is eh, could be a little up there significantly but. higher than 1400 dollars or so yeah, the the uh, yeah. base yeah. price on any of these was about thirteen forty nine. A lot of them are in that seventeen to twenty one hundred range. Yeah, and I'm deeply in love with the old Lenovo's. I they they were some of the best machines that I ever had. Uh, I had the nubbin to rub when I needed to, and the trackpads were easily disableable, so you didn't drive yourself utterly insane with them. But I'm torn with this because I, I love the fact that they're suggesting that you'll be able to upgrade it or get things rep- replaced. On the other hand, I've had to deal with tech support at Lenovo where generally the cost of any replacement part is significantly higher than the price of buying a new machine. I, I don't know if any of you guys have had to deal with uh, Lenovo support over the years, but seriously, it, the, uh, an X51 replacement motherboard was like $1,300. A brand new one was nine hundred and eighty dollars. So I'm, I'm hoping they've turned a leaf. I'm hoping that this is actually going to make sense and that it's really going to offer people a chance to do it. And to be honest, it's kind of sad that Lenovo hasn't. They've lost a lot of market share over the years, uh, especially to Dell, but to other companies as well. Like that's what the companies are going with. And I hope, really, honestly, hope they've learned their lesson to say, you know, big upfront price because damn, we do put a lot of effort into this and it's worth it, which is true. But if something breaks or if you want to upgrade something, I really hope that they either accept user upgradable parts or charge a, a reasonable price for a, a Lenovo approved replacement part. So I'd love to see how these work out. But I mean, I, cause I've noticed that Lenovo, uh, you know, when they were and I, I never bought them like on a business scale, but from consumer standpoint, the, 
IBM era ThinkPads were pretty much you guaranteed to get something good. And then after the transition, only a few of their product lines maintained that confidence. And it, it was there, but it, it wasn't like it was before. And, and, and now, I mean, they've made a lot of strides uh, recently. And one thing I will note is, as, I, as Sebastian said in that new uh, Extreme Gen 3 Core i9 processor, and it's, you know, that's a thin and light. It's kind of like Apple's MacBook Pros. But what I do like about Lenovo is they're not shy about cooling. They will ramp the fan up on these things and you will hear it and it'll fill your room, but that's good. Like give customers the option to say, I don't want to be thermally throttled. I don't care if it makes noise because I'm rendering something or uploading a video or whatever. And so that's the, that's the difference is, is Apple is always very sensitive about noise and, you know, acoustics and all that, but Lenovo will, you'll hear your Lenovo when it, when it kicks up I and mean, you can, you can manually yeah, I, stop that. But in their in their defense, I will say they did some of the same things with the X1 series that, that Apple did back when Johnny Ive was doing videos about uh, eh, what were the fan blades, the asymmetrical uh, fan blades or whatever it was that because yeah. they were doing some of that same stuff oh, with the X1 geez, series when the yeah. carbon first launched because it's, it's the different. idea of no, the, the idea is you don't want the, a consistent noise. So, yeah, they make noise, but it's not this whine. It's. It's that sort of slightly inconsistent sound that's easier for you to you know. Well, not like that. Now you're making the sound of an AMD stock CPU cooler doing normal desktop functions as it spools up and then down and then up and then down again constantly. Josh knows it's that pain, but uh, I don't know what I was saying. Something. Something about laptops. Oh, the other thing about this is it ties nicely in with a week or two ago. We were talking about the fact that they have this Linux 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 initiative where you can order these things with red hat uh like fedora with ubuntu and that, that was across their entire workstation lineup they said mobile and desktop so it includes all of these p-series laptops so if you like the looks of this hardware and you don't want to deal with the worst operating system on earth you can choose linux and it's, it becomes this nice so it, it becomes more of, I think, a legitimate competitor to somebody who's going to look at perhaps a MacBook Pro because that's like an alternative operating system and premium hardware. Well, this is premium hardware and an alternative operating system, too, if you don't want Windows. But I won't go down that road. All right. Well, we'll, well stay tuned. They're no System 76, but, you know, that's actually oh. very, very good of them to, yes. to do that sort of thing. Yeah, well, they're that's no true. Squadron 76 either. We can get to that later. Well, sort of. So we'll talk about something that's not vaporware. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we'll, we'll check. We'll see what happens with pricing there. Pricing with Lenovo is always crazy, too. They always have, like, everything's always on sale. So, like, list price, you'll never pay, but it's some insane number, yeah. and then there's always a, some sale going on. So it's, it's hard to, you know, pin down the pricing. But we'll check in with those uh, going forward, see uh, what happens when those hit the market. Maybe they'll send us some. We've reviewed some Lenovo's in the past. So uh, we'll, we'll check in there. All right. Uh, next up, we've got a couple more news stories left. We've got uh, some issues. If you're running a Windows Insider build, you may notice uh, it's not just you. Edge is a little pushy. Right, Jeremy? Yeah. It, it thinks it's the new Explorer. <laughs> Literally. Uh, even if you are to go in and change uh, the launch behavior of it to specifically block it from starting up at launch or login, Edge is still going to do it. And Microsoft apparently doesn't quite know why. Uh, I believe that their left hand is mute and their right hand might be deaf. Either way, they're asking for your help. So, And, and you're not on a ring anymore. They've uh, changed the whole way that they're doing the Insiders program, which is a different topic that if you're interested in, you probably already know about. But yeah, so they've uh, given you some instructions on how to support, submit your log files. And for those paying attention, you actually have to submit these log files, even if you choose the verbose feedback to Microsoft at the very beginning of the Windows 10 install, it's still not actually harvesting this much data. So we can enable the logging and send it because Microsoft would very much like you, their unpaid beta testers, to be doing their homework as well. On the other hand, you know, if you're involved in this, you're doing it because you're interested in operating systems, you're interested in playing around with how your computer works, and your feedback is valuable because 
you are literally the canary in the cage walking down the mine. And when you die, it means the rest of us can go running. But if we run out of canaries to test, that means the rest of us are going to have to do it on our own. So please, if you're playing around the insider ring, uh, enable logging, if you haven't already, which you should have done, and send it in. Because we can't, the, the world is already precipitous enough. We can't all be living on the edge. And and just, I, I'm not sure if we were exactly clear what's happening here. Edge is launching itself at login, regardless yep. of setting. That's Start up or problem. login if you don't have login. Yeah. And the, and the That's, other... It's been doing that. What build, I mean... I have been running yeah. 1909 on all the systems here, and that's one of the first things I have to do. If I re if I start up a system to run tests, I have to go in and kill like four edge processes to have a like clean boot, even though there's nothing enabled at startup at all. Yeah, well, killing an edge process Fun. is like killing Cortana. I know it comes right. It gets Cortana a green just leaf beside at least it. is explicit about it, it. Cortana explicitly comes back. At least Edge claims not to be running anymore, but yeah. Yeah, I, I know. All right. Well, we'll have links to those uh, to that article and uh, those instructions if you're suffering from this. And uh, then, of course, all we have to do is pray that Microsoft actually listens. They have no problem yeah. collecting feedback from their users. It's about implementing and fixing the problems those users discover. That's been the, uh, the long-standing issue with the new Microsoft. Please, mom, I don't want to go up to 2004. Please, mom, I want to go. <laughs> well. Luckily, they're, 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 it looks like they're being conservative there with pushing that update. So, I wonder why. Yeah. All right. So, uh, who here played X Wing, Tie Fighter, X Wing vs. Tie Fighter, X Wing Alliance? Uh oh, it was great. Do I have one. Uh, <laughs> oh, just a Tie Fighter man. Tie Fighter was the bomb. <laughs> uh, sound effects provided by uh, Brett and his toy collection. No. X Wing X Wing versus Tie Fighter was great until Tie Fighter came out, and that was, as Josh said, unbelievable. Oh, the box edition, the box edition. Yeah. There we go. Sebastian's have, got the original X Wing box. Tie Fighter back there as well. But anyway, I have multiple versions of this. The first one I started on, and this is not it. I had the CD ROM collector's edition. This is an old three and a half inch floppy version. Oh, but nice! Very nice. It's it's such a great game. It's such a great game. They, they, they were I played this a lot more than TIE Fighter. But oh, you did? I know most people okay. seem to be on the other side of it. Yeah, everybody's like, TIE yeah. Fighter was the greatest. I played this. This is what I bought and owned. And I didn't have a copy of TIE Fighter until much later. Yeah. Well, type, so you type. liked running around, just driving around and shooting things as opposed to whole story missions and pay attention to the briefing, kid, or you're going to fail that mission again and again and again and again. Yeah, I wasn't again. very I never said I was good. I was yeah. never very good. I mean, T TIE Fighter introduced uh, a little bit more complexity, uh, more complex missions. It had time acceleration, so you didn't have to sit there and wait for that captured freighter to slowly make its way to the hyperspace uh, coordinates. But th these are a great, if you're unfamiliar, these are a great series of games. Uh, tie, let's see, X-Wing, I think, was 93. TIE Fighter was 94. Yep. X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter was 97. And X-Wing Alliance was 99. And we haven't had anything like it since. They were somewhat realistic sci-fi shooters, you know, complex missions, um, different in a non-Newtonian universe, but apart from that, yeah. well, sure. I mean, not right. realistic in the sense of the X-Wing or the Star Wars, rather the Star Wars, uh, universe and how that, that all works. But this week EA, after, if this, this has been leaked for a while now, but EA finally came out and announced uh, Star Wars squadrons, which is going to be their new game coming up. Uh, I think it launches October 2nd. It's a $40 game, which is interesting at that price point, launching for PC, Xbox, and PS4 with VR support for PC and PS4. And everyone's very excited. Let's see if I can find the trailer for it here. And so, you know, everyone got really excited because th what they're saying is this is going to be, there's going to be a single player campaign. It's all star fighters yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's going to be a multiplayer campaign and it's not going to have microtransactions. They said, <laughs> Right. I don't want to call well, EA reps really? liars, but that's they say that. So I'm I'm sure they'll come you up with some way. Shouldn't insult liars like that. Right. Right. So the problem I have. Well, first of all, people are excited. Everyone's excited because, first of all, with the no no microtransactions and finally a return to starfighter combat in the Star Wars universe. My my concern is looking at the what they've released thus far, which is this trailer, which they don't indicate is is actual gameplay. It looks. You know, it might be in engine, but it's not in game. 
it looks very much like the space battle scenes that we saw in the recent Battlefield games, which are fine, but they're they're very arcadey, not very customizable. I mean, EA says you're going to have customizable options and you're going to, you know, uh, face off with a selection of starfighters on the Imperial and Rebel side. Uh, but it just, it doesn't, I, I have a bad feeling about this. Um <laughs> <laughs> to, to coin yeah. uh, Han Solo, and uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I believe more information is coming tomorrow, right? I'm ready. Well, Brett's got his joystick. He's ready. Yep. I'll, I'll definitely ready. check it out, but I just don't think this is if you're a big <sighs> expert. Oh, I got too. <laughs> if you're Are you ready? ready? Although I'm going to have to tear it apart. The rubber's going weird, weird in there. What, in the inside or the oh, see, spot Josh down here? Have the real deal here. No, I think on yeah. the inside. No, this mine's good. Mine's good. Yeah, mine, I spent a few years not playing, and I just I fired up uh, Mech Warrior again, and it's getting better. But no, there's a definite down where it's just it doesn't uh, register anything, and then it starts to leap. I didn't plug mine in on yeah. when I was playing Mech Warrior. I'll, I'll try that. S yeah. Sadly, I've I've got within six feet of me a Sidewinder to force feedback. Oh, mine broke. Oh, those are the best things just to plug waiting. in. Because it boot, it goes thing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like back in 1993, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, oh boy, it didn't so much scare me. Uh, she used well, to be a, just kind of show this is. She used to serve beer at our local uh, uh, baseball game. Uh, at that point, we're triple A. Now we're down to yeah. single A. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, not Bailey in Vancouver. That's where she was discovered. By more than a few people, but one of them launched mm. her career mm. and upsizing. Mm. I, how did we get here? Um, I'm not anyway. sure. I think we were talking about we were talking about joysticks. Uh, Let's talk about the yeah, joysticks well, some more. Yeah, joysticks. Yeah. It's all about the joysticks. Yeah. I love this so I have thing. a don't, don't you? I have I a Wingman twist. Force, which has the strongest feedback of any I've ever used, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be yeah. Windows 10 compliant. Although I think it might actually have a USB option. I want to say that one's USB or game port. All right. I'm jealous, Michael Bury, because I'm looking at the Hotas, but I'm not. I can't really drop three to four hundred dollars on a proper Hotas system. Like it, and that's what they cost. Uh, but I, think, I know it's going to be so nice. I think Thermal Take has one. That's like 140 bucks. It's yeah, like but is plastic. it the proper new Hall yeah, effect but, as but opposed to the old suck? Thermal and... Take or Thrustmaster? Oh, I'm sorry, not Thrustmaster. Thrust yeah, it'll be Thrustmaster. Thrust yeah, thrust Thermal master. Take, not so much on yeah. joysticks. No, no. Sorry. Well, not unless you use it. Can I just say the, the, the manual that comes with X Wing? Oh, you need is... to read that. That's not I, a manual. That's a, TIE fighter. a book. Fighter. That's a novel. Right. That's this TIE Fighter. Sorry. Not, not right. X Wing. This. Yeah. Uh, what Sebastian No, that gave you the specs on everything. Yeah. It. Look at this. The Adventurer magazine that came inside. This is when Star Wars merch was legit. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lovely Yoda mask. Well, we'll be sure uh, to pick this up when it launches and do some coverage. Uh, I know that streaming, uh, perhaps. a fan of the site at one point had sent, when Ryan still owned it, he had sent him a serial-based force feedback uh, sidewinder, which Ryan kept I, I don't know where that is i think he still has it it didn't come over yep. in the transition hopefully but... it hopefully it's next to the sound car that still got the serial port in the back oh you yeah. can get adapters and they can do the sweet midi sound that's going to come with this game uh, it's uh, pci too yes yeah i know the, the isa wouldn't have enough bandwidth at that point isa <laughs> yeah, it's pci but we'll we'll check this so, out i i saw one of the youtube commenters point out that uh well it's because no microtransactions, EA will just tell us that they're macro transactions and sell us nice. DLC that is just rebranded microtransactions. Mm. Oh, or yeah, yeah. You want to tie advanced? Going to cost you, kids. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not a microtransaction. It's just, look, if you, yeah, if you want an extra ship, it's just warning you nine a ship. That's all. Oh, you're going to need a bomber for that mission. Hmm. So, no, the bombers are. are they're, they're all Bomber copying war gaming and world of tanks yeah. and world of warships. <sighs> yeah, I think you're buy this new right ship there, for fifty nine dollars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, on, but it's Josh. the Yamamoto. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, when it's the Yamato. No, the Yamato, it, you can, you can, you can earn just in the game. But things okay, like, you know, the Missouri, which is a battleship with radar. You can't get it uh, anymore. It was a lot of money at the time. And just 16-inch yeah. guns. Yeah, there's lots of 16-inch wow. guns in the game, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> well, hopefully it won't be that bad, uh, but we will see. Uh, and yeah, uh, But Star Citizen's the, the one that you should be worried about. Oh, right. Well, that Because uh, literally that whole fucking example of that game was, yes, you want to play? We'll give you this Pinto. You want to have fun? How much you want to pay for a ship? Well, oh, they've been and we've got insurance. Right. They, they've, been charging, lose that ship. they've been charging people hundreds of dollars for ships before the game's, like, years before the game was even finished. It's still you, not finished. You couldn't, it's you still couldn't leave the It's never going to be finished. You could, Why would you, you finish it? It's, it's a cash hangar. cow. At this point, no, it's just... <laughs> a friend of mine has spent 200 bucks on it. <laughs> and a friend of his in-game has spent over, like, Twelve thousand dollars. Good no. Yeah, the guy is the, the guy is 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 well off, obviously. <gasps> but this is just it's a hobby for him, and good lord. Yeah, no. I mean, they've made I'd what one hundred and fifty million dollars off of this game so far, and it's yeah. only an alpha. And no one is actually that truly upset about it, which is the utterly yeah. baffling it's part weird. about it. Uh, well, Although I would Mr. say Roberts. that. I'd say, yeah, yeah. Chris Roberts is just rolling in money, laughing maniacally. But <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say nobody's upset. Like I've noticed because I, I don't follow it. I mean, I, if it ever, I was going to say nobody, I'll, but I'll, not the majority. Not a lot of people are upset about this because they're still. Oh look, we're going to be in it, and I'm on the chain because I got the Squadron Seventy Six one, the, the single player that doesn't cost you any money other than what you put in. Because you know, honestly, I wanted to play this. Mm-hmm years ago uh and every time people seem to get upset he just offers up new ships yeah and new specs and everyone's happy and throws some money again regardless of your space sim is. of choice uh we'll keep an eye on star wars here and and see where that that goes uh so uh and, and the, like i said there is more coming they promised like i believe it was gameplay footage at some point uh this week uh jordan in our, our discord said it, i think he thought it was saturday it's coming up soon. In the next few days, you should be able to see some. They got plenty of time. Else. It's only four months of them launch. Uh, yeah. Why should you have to have gameplay footage at this point? Sure, sure. Let's get into the picks of the week here. Uh, Josh, you're up first. What have you got for us? Uh, you know, memory prices are still pretty depressed. There's some good deals out, and uh, if you've got a Ryzen, you really want 32 gigs of memory. This is still a pretty good price. 149 bucks for. St- Cast 16, DDR4, 3600. Um, yeah, it should work fine. I'm going to be doing some testing on it uh, this uh, this weekend. And uh, otherwise, you know, a couple of months ago, it was, you know, uh, basically the price of 3200 with uh, Cast 18. So this is uh, looking like a nice little deal. They're well available. You can buy 12, 10 at a time, though I don't know why you'd need that. So, yeah, 32 gigs. Okay, so that's yeah, the, uh, the the G-Skill Ripjaws 5, uh, 32 gig, uh, 2x16 memory kit at uh, 3600 CAS 16. We'll have a link these, to that. Are, these are kind of key for, for Ryzen because mm-hmm. uh, Ryzen goes up to, what, the Northbridge speed of 37, 33? So without you know taking that next quantum leap in 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 price, these are a nice balance of performance and and whatnot. Yes, and there was a uh, a very in depth gamers nexus video on that quite a few months ago where he went through and tested all the different speeds and configurations for memory, uh, and uh, I believe his conclusion was too just get some get the lowest latency thirty six hundred megahertz memory you can, and that's really a good match for Ryzen. So I'll try to link that video in the show notes if I can remember. Um, but uh, well, and you want Samsung B die as well, yes. Uh, uh, and Josh, if you don't have it, uh, I was going to mention this earlier, but uh, we got talking about other things. There's a Ryzen memory calculator out there, which is a hell of a lot of fun to play with and goes into every memory timing, not just RAS cast. And it's 
it's kind of fun to play with. Yeah, I'm just gonna do XMP and call it good. Fair. I that's fair. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I'm lazy. Yeah, PP. It's I've actually played with it. Uh, it's not for Threadripper, more or less, or at least first gen. Well, it's. I mean, it what, says what I got manually name. was better than what they did. Sure. So we'll, we'll Jim, it's that, in the uh, it's in the Discord. The uh, the Steve Burke uh, video. Oh, uh, uh, thanks to the to North Ranger in our Discord for linking that for me. So I'll make sure to grab that Burke? link and put it in the show notes. Yes, Tech Jesus. Hi, Tech Jesus. All right, uh, Jeremy, what's your pick for us this week? Well, you know, now that we're sequestered at home, we're looking for someone to provide companionship. And, well, I've got great news for you. Boston Dynamics has released Spot to the general public, and you can buy it now. It's, it, I mean, it is a small investment, but, you know, you buy any animal, it's, it's, you've got to invest a lot into it. In this case, it's $74,500. But you can get their creepy little robot dog for your own very own. It's it like how could you not? It, it can wander around telling people that uh, they're too close to each other, like it is in Korea right now. Uh, you could teach it to jump in crazy ways. You could build yourself a carriage and then have it drag you around. Now there is a problem if it sort of runs out of batteries uh the extra battery is another 4600 bucks but you know come on you've already invested this much into your pet you you've, you really should you know buy it the extra battery so yeah you you literally can just go out and buy a boston dynamic spot now well just just remember treat the robots nicely better safe than sorry don't kick it be nice safe please and thank you all right yeah, brett that's it doesn't make a difference oh, no, i need to find that video <laughs> <laughs> um hey do you remember when you bought that uh that uh, z370 or that z390 board and you didn't buy top end you know you know you're starting to feel like maybe you should have bought the top end or the jump to z490 is just a little bit too far and that there's still plenty of life left in your uh, current motherboard and maybe you're going to figure out a way to stretch its legs well fortunately the old standby, the previous top end, eighth generation CPU is on sale. This actually is a good price, especially when you compare it to its equivalent ninth generation. The, the 9700K is about 45 to $50 more than this. So if you came in on the low side with an Intel board, just getting up and running, probably playing some good games and looking at the, the leap to the next generation, <clears throat> It's it's actually you know Z three seventy Z three ninety or to the four hundred series is okay, a just, big jump. Just just stop right there and Maybe. go back to that graphic <clears throat> and take a look at the price three twenty nine ninety nine and go directly to the right and see what nope. it says <laughs> in stock July twenty third. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't uh, like that can't. earlier today. <laughs> and if you go to Newegg, <laughs> you can look it up on Newegg. There's like from this moment on, there's like oh. two hours left in the in this in the immediate delivery. It's delivered price, before it's I, available. That's amazing. I, I, I okay. picked the the Brett. one on Amazon because it it looked like it had a longer longer lifespan. Brett, are right, you be, legitimately be advocating that people purchase a Coffee Lake Core i7 for yeah. three hundred and thirty dollars in two thousand twenty? If they've got an Intel Z370 uh, or Z390 board and they bought low end and they're looking for an upgrade, you get a 9700K. A lot of more. We got to buy a new board. It costs it, it, a 9700K. Oh, that's right. Oh, 9700. You don't. Right. No, that's right. But it's $50 more for eight yeah. cores and no. But is it available no today? Cores, not not six and no, cores, no six, SMT. <laughs> with it are hyper threaded. 612. So. Hey, you can't throw the hyper threading. Six twelve is roughly is better for for highly multi threaded applications, but ninety seven hundred K yes. is going to be better at gaming and it has higher clock speeds. Not not well, necessarily. You can you can hit but five gigahertz heard? on ninety seven hundred K. Okay, okay. We're not talking haven't about overclock. You have to disable hyper threading, otherwise you, you're you, unsafe. True. The out of the box. If, if the out of the box. Admit, 
full mitigation, Brett. Uh, I, I know you're an Apple user. There is a way to, to enable full mitigation with a terminal command. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, there are eight real cores. And yeah, maybe there's some, some, uh, some stuff in the architecture that's still perhaps problematic. But at least with SMT, you have that peace of mind. And who wouldn't want to buy what is effectively <laughs> a 9900K with hyperthreading disabled? Now, or a 9900K is, com- is out of the question. It's, that's 500 plus. I said dollars. with hyperthreading yes. disabled, if you think about it, if you bought a 9900K and disabled hyperthreading, you've got a 9700K. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's there we go. pretty There's much equal. Big move square with jo- with it's Jim. pretty much <laughs> equal in almost every characteristic to an 8700K for $50 less. In fact, actually, if you're gonna, if you're thinking 8700K, get a 3600, get a Ryzen oh, 3600. No, 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 no. That's threads. right out. That's right out. We started at a Why? different place. It's so much less expensive. Because, no, because it, because because, you're, because you're the motherboard right. thing. No, because you're right. If you were starting from, hey, I want to build a computer, you're right. Oh no! Of course, be doing 8700K. That's and there's a reason that Intel processors have such incredible resale value when they're only a generation or two behind. Seventy still sell for three hundred bucks. The eighty seven hundred K is still brand new three thirty for a reason. Because you, have, you traded yours for a, a nice Honda Civic, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't yours a straight I mean, up trade for a Honda Civic. I think so. It wasn't. It wasn't a Honda Civic, but it was. It's a Mazda three. But yeah, I mean, I I yeah. drive. Yeah, I, well, I'm very comfortable trade. in that car that that the processor paid for. No, it's easy shells. to poke holes in the. It's easy to poke holes in the eighty seven hundred K, but it's actually a good deal. Three twenty nine. I disagree Moving 100% along. with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so whatever the hell that was. <laughs> Ryan Schroeder's no, heart think, grew three times. He's uh, just trolling us. Brett is just trolling us this one. I could have picked a troll pick like that. I could say, everybody could go out and buy a Ryzen 3 3300X. You can't find one, but it's a great part for the price if you could find You'd it. You'd be right. But You'd be right. Can't. Sorry, Michael what did you just great, resell, great Sebastian? Pick. Michael Michael says I'm says it was fine. All right, fantastic. <laughs> my, no. but we're just just get this over with. My pick of the week. Uh, it's a couple of free games. One is just a straight up free game, and another is uh, you know a, a way to get an extra copy of a game. I uh, the beholder. Yeah, so it's all through GOG. Uh, they're just they're straight up for the next about two days, just giving away Eye of the Beholder, uh, which is a, a really good. Uh, what was the year? Was it ninety one? Uh, you know, so early '90s uh, adventure RPG fantasy game. Uh, you just have to go to the uh, GOG website. You have to have an account with them, which is free. And then you go to their website. There's a banner. Go to giveaway, and then they just add it to your account. Uh, just like many of the other free games they've given away. Uh, so, so check that out. It's it is time limited. I think it's about 40 hours left I on played, that deal. Yeah. Played that with Pools of Radiance. Mm-hmm. Yes, fantastic games. Step forward. Step forward. And then the other uh, sort of giveaway here is that they're they're doing a giveaway through their GOG Galaxy client, which is sort of like a Steam client alternative, uh, but it doesn't have any DRM associated with it. And the, the deal here is so, so the GOG store is owned by CD Projekt, which is the developer that makes the Witcher games. And so they're doing a deal where if you uh, if you link your accounts, because in the GOG Galaxy client, you can link other platforms like your PlayStation library, your Xbox library, your Steam and if you bought The Witcher for one of those other plat, The Witcher Three for one of those other platforms, uh, even console, you can get a free copy from the GOG store. Now, why would you want to do that? You could, because the GOG games are DRM free. You can download an installer that will always work. It doesn't phone home, doesn't check anything. So you can grab that free copy. There's instructions here uh, on their support page. We'll link to that. Uh, the way it works is you get uh, you get the version of the game that you have the equivalent of. So if you have the plain old vanilla. Uh, Witcher 3 on like Xbox, for example, and you want it on PC, uh, you'll get the the regular plain Witcher 3. If you had the Game of the Year edition with the DLC, you get that version uh, instead. So it's a really nice little deal to either get a second DRM-free copy on PC or if you played it on console, to get a free copy on PC anyway. So you can play it with higher fidelity, do mods, things like that. So uh, good on Unless GOG. you play it on the Switcher. Unless you play it on the Switcher. Switcher not being... Yeah. Oh, the Switch, you mean? Yes, yes, because the, the GOG Galaxy client does not currently link to Nintendo's game library. So, yeah, that doesn't However, uh, as I understand, the Switch is allowing you to port your save games to any other platform regardless. So, Oh, really? Okay. Something this is what I either. heard. I don't actually oh. own one. 
All right. So sorry, Switch fans, uh, but uh, PC, Xbox, PS4, check it out. Well, okay. That's our show for this week. Um, wow. Okay. It was a dumpster fire, <laughs> but what else? I uh, hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any, any of you guys have any closing remarks uh, to, to round out the show here? No? I don't okay. think we can drag it lower. All right. Well, I will say that, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot going on. Everybody knows I'm a hockey fan. I'm from, from Buffalo. The Sabres organization is on fire. <laughs> I mean, on fire. It could not be more disastrous. Uh, in just in terms of general hockey, Red Wings legend Pavel Datsuk has apparently joined a COVID apocalyptic cult in Russia and has holed himself up in a monastery. Oh, I missed that. That's yeah. Check uh, I, whatever. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, he's only forty-one. Yeah, yeah. He's doing this. That's a young still. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't played for the Red Wings for a few years, but he was still playing in Russia uh, up till this most yeah. uh, oh, recent season. Great but uh, so I don't know what's going on there. You look outside; the, world, the world's on fire. The news media has lost its mind. But you know, we have to look for things that bring us joy. And coming to you and meeting with you guys, meeting the crew here and meeting you in the audience every week brings me joy. So I'm really happy that uh, you could be here with us. Uh, thanks for, for joining us. And uh, be sure to check out the uh, the podcast page at pcpro.com slash podcast for all the links to everything we talked about today. And uh, just until we see you next week, uh, please uh, be well, everyone. And we'll see you then. Mm-hmm.